Speaking at the Asian Financial Forum 2012 here in Hong Kong is Douglas Flint. He's the group chairman of HSBC. Douglas, thanks for joining us. And indeed, the biggest bank in Europe, I think that's what HSBC is. What's your view of the sovereign debt crisis there is at the moment and of the stability pact that the European countries have come up with? Well, it's clearly a very complicated situation. I think the, the best thing that one can say at the moment is that there is a clear realization among all the governments in Europe and indeed all the governments around the world that the situation needs to be addressed to achieve a positive outcome. And I think the concerted actions now being discussed are a necessary evolution of that program of improvement. So given where they've got to get to, given where we've come from, you know, I think we're at the stage in the program that I'd expect to be at this stage. Given the fact that the UK is not a member of the Stability Pact, could that destabilize the pact altogether? Well, the UK is not part of the euro and, and, and the UK still has a voice as a major country, a major economic nation around the world. The UK, of course, is significantly impacted by what happens in Europe, so has a continuing and major interest. So I don't believe that its voice is unheard or unimportant, um, but it clearly is not part of the euro. So those countries within the eurozone have a much more pressing need to engage on this subject. So would I be right in saying that London will retain its position as the leading financial centre in Europe, regardless of the pact? I think London's competitiveness is, is independent of what happens in, in the Eurozone to a very large degree. I mean, London is a, the major offshore centre for the dollar and, and obviously isn't in a dollar block. So I think as long as London benefits as it does today from the cluster effect of all the infrastructure and services and professional uh, arrangements that are in place that make the, the financial markets based in Europe in that critical time zone work, then London still has a significant comparative competitive advantage. So turning to the banks themselves, are you quite happy with the capitalization and basic liquidity of banks that there are in Europe and indeed also in UK? I think that a huge amount of progress has been made in the reform agenda over the last four years. In fact, it's quite staggering when one looks back at just how much has been done um, there is clearly going to be further capital raising, particularly across the Eurozone and particularly in countries where the sovereigns are themselves uh, under some pressure. So I'm sure we will see a continuing program of capital strengthening and focusing on of credit appetite into uh, the parts of the real economy that are being emphasized by government. So we, one can never be complacent and say, say we've done enough. What is good? is that I think between the industry and the regulators and indeed governments, there's a clear focus as to how we want the industry to be shaped, uh, where we want it to pursue the allocation of credit, and how we want it to be, to be organized. So I, I'm, I feel confident that we're all heading in the same direction. So bearing in mind all the difficulties in Europe, in the United States as well, would HSBC really be looking towards Asia and specifically China? HSBC's future is very much following trade and investment flows and therefore Asia and beyond Asia, the faster growing markets, the developing markets will be an ever more important part of our mix of business. So yes, Asia will be, I believe, for some time to come, the fastest growing region within HSBC and, and the major uh, contributor to our growth and to our profitability. So Mr. Flynn, turning to Hong Kong, very much part of the HSBC name, but where does Hong Kong really stand in the strategy that HSBC has in the Asia Pacific region? It's hugely important. I mean, it's by far our most important uh, operation in terms of profitability, in terms of our history, in terms of the fact that it's the nexus, the import-export hub for the region and, and certainly for China. So, you know, it's hugely important in everything that happens in the region and we have a very strong history, tradition and, uh, and profitability there. So it's core to our going forward. The big question is whether Hong Kong can become the global headquarters for HSBC, bearing in mind also that the British government now expects banks to split up their investment arms from everything else in the bank. Well, it's certainly a very complicated uh, regulatory reform world at the moment. I mean, I think the more relevant question actually is, does Hong Kong have all the characteristics in terms of infrastructure, service sector, rule of law, international respect and so on to be the headquarters centre for any type of company, financial services or, or indeed 
manufacturing or logistics. And I believe Hong Kong has all the necessary attributes to host international operations. It certainly does so today in regional operations. And I believe as the world increasingly moves east, there will be centers like Hong Kong, and Hong Kong I think has a, a significant comparative advantage in being host to regional and ultimately to global headquarters of companies that are basing their future on, on, on global growth that will ever more be centered in, in, in Asia. So it has all the necessary qualifications uh, to be a relevant choice. Hong Kong is building its reputation as a center for the overseas renminbi, but to what extent will HSBC be involved in that business? Oh, it's going to be huge. I mean, long term, we see that there will be three very significant trade and investment currencies, the dollar, the euro, and, and ultimately, at some point, the RMB. Hong Kong leads today in terms of the offshore RMB market. We believe that will grow strongly. The RMB, in terms of a, a, a trade settlement currency, is growing extraordinarily rapidly. And we offer RMB trade settlement in, in, in around 50 countries today. That will grow. So, I mean, I think RMB will grow into being one of the most important currencies in the world. I believe Hong Kong has a leading position in that today, which it will clearly seek to protect and grow, and, and, and we will seek to enable it to be comparatively competitive and a leading player in that marketplace going forward. Asia driving sustainable growth is the theme of the Asian Financial Forum 2012. But to what extent does HSBC really take that theme on board? Very much so. I mean, not just in trade, where, where Asia has always had a leading role, but I think in investment flows. I mean, it's clear that one of the necessary steps for Asia to deliver its full potential is the opening up of its capital markets, the expansion of institutional savings as opposed to uh, personal savings. And that will create a whole new industry in terms of uh, institutional savings market, pensions, insurance products and so on, which again already is well underway in terms of design and need. And as those savings markets mature, um, the creation of bond markets, the exportation of capital uh, into real physical assets outside the region again will take, uh, take place.